Nothing is more accurate than real strands and fabric ropes and thread shots. But we know it takes time to model it, especially if you want realistic tips with curly fibers. That's why I made an HDA called Threadify. If I throw it on polylines, it will generate a thread geometry for each primitive using your available attributes. As you can see, I animated this line along the length of another bigger line and it follows it like a path. It is not a curve or any string operation, it is a line being mapped over another line with an offset parameter. And we have this boring movement. Now I want to make a thread out of it. I throw thread phi on it and bang! We have a rope with a thickness of one unit. We can lower the thickness, adjust the roll which rotates it all at once, or twist the thread. And with negative numbers you can twist in the opposite direction. You can feed ThreadFi with some attributes from the input lines. For example, if you set the noise on the scale values, this thread will look like peanuts. Now this thickness parameter is scaling the P scale. So the value of 1 means that you are seeing just what the P scale is giving you. Look how cool it is on curved guide path. Now that we have this weird shaped curve, it is important to set an up attribute to avoid snapped rotations. This orient along curve node does just that. Now let's create a falloff using mops and name it roll, because roll is an attribute ThreadFi reads to help design and animate the twists. Now see how I use this spherical falloff to twist the curve in some places. I added another falloff to twist the thread at both ends of the path. By the way, the other outputs of ThreadFi give you real tubes. Here is a tube version of the input curve, which simplifies the visualization. And this is the complete final geometry in case you need it. Do you need UVs? ThreadFi gives it. And the fiber thickness is automatically calculated based on this part where they are closest together. ThreadFi takes this reference frame and searches for the tightest part in it to calculate the scale of the fibers. This calculation is based on the distance between the fibers at this point. By default, it will try to fill every space, so this option generates fibers with different thicknesses. But you can set it to use only minimum or maximum distances, or an average value for constant thicknesses. If this automatic calculation is not enough, you can always scale the fibers, or use the inherited thickness from the input curve. Thread file, of course, lets you define how many fibers you want per thread and if you want it to be filled or hollow. These tips are irregular by default, but you can reduce the variation per fiber here. This way, it is easier to see how the openness parameter unrolls and curls the fibers. The bigger the tip length, the more the tips will open and curl. You can adjust the curl angle in the advanced tab of the tips and give back some variation after seeing what is happening. And there's always a random seed to pick a random possibility. Now let's dial back the tip length. When the openness is close to zero, it creates this round shape, which can be controlled using this first ramp. The other two ramps are for when the tips are open. There is one ramp per tip in this case. You can add noise to the tips, where the noise amplitude depends on the p-scale value, or add irregularities to the thread as a whole. You can add this noise just to the surface or to all the fibers. If you turn on vary per strand and disable the rest attribute, you can achieve this wavy motion as the input lines slide in the air. You can buy ThreadFi using the links in the description. This node is part of a bigger project to help make fabric shots or fabric geometry way easier to do in Houdini. You can have the ThreadFi Detangle node for free. This is an almost automatic way to detangle if you don't want to configure the detangle sub by yourself. I hope you enjoy using ThreadFi and I'd like to hear what you think about it. Until the next time, see you, bye bye.